willpower and determination. Both righteousness and unrighteousness use willpower, and whichever motivates you, can determine the direction in which your willpower manifests. If it is a natural act, willpower will manifest into righteousness. And if it is unnatural acts the willpower will manifest into unrighteousness. When you transform naturally, you feel incorrupt, honest, liberated, virtuous, and worthy. But when you transform unnaturally, you feel corrupt, defeated, dishonest, shameful, and unworthy. It is ethical to promote natural actions because you have a connection and strength for the right behavior. And it is unethical to promote unnatural actions because you have a disconnect and weakness for wrong behavior. To transform you make a dramatic change in your actions and behavior. Conforming to righteousness conveys moral conduct, and conforming to unrighteousness conveys immoral conduct. Morally transforming your behavior means conforming to acceptable standards of morality, and immorally transforming your behavior means not conforming to acceptable standards of morality. Immoral acts can lead to habitual behaviors that can form into a disorder. When you develop a disorder, it would likely have to be treated by a doctor. Things like cancers, diseases, or injuries all can increase the probability, and those things can occur when you put things off that would prevent them. Putting things off is called akrasia, and it is a part of nature. Akrasia is the state of acting against one's better judgment, a weakness of willpower to do what's morally right. The tendency isn't to control negative habits. When thinking of yourself as a passive observer, forgetting you are an active participant in the current excessive thoughts. Positive thinkers disconnect from the present life, and negative thinkers disconnect from the future. Positive thinkers overlook current negative circumstances and eternal outcomes. And negative thinkers overlook current positive circumstances and non-eternal outcomes. During these tendencies you defile the body playing down life for death. Environment and social change too play an important role in how your thoughts manifest. However, you don't acknowledge controlling the excessiveness of negative or positive thoughts that later turns into a habitual habit. Your parents can't live a righteous life for you, you must do it yourself. Transgressions against God. Personal beliefs can lead to confrontation or confusion. God withholds nothing, and everything is offered to you. Since sin is an immoral act believed to be a transgression against God's divine laws, your loyalty is to Him. All of which means you don't purposefully commit acts against God, in vain nor the same sin. You don't stray away from God's message, because it opens greater doors of possibility. If you can't comprehend the message in church take notes. When you get home read the notes to yourself to build better character. The name that brings peace to everyone's life, ought to be honored with grace and truth. Eternal incarceration of the body, mind, and soul. Incarceration of the mind is the result of environmental issues, incarceration of the body is the result of defiled health, and either involves the soul polluting the mind. This is the irrational result of a soul drifting to sleep, and after damages are done illogically the body depresses into eternal incarceration. The majority of people are in a habit of not accepting the reality of knowing negative results, they rather pretend a change doesn't need to be made. And since the majority don't face fears before death occurs, these same fears are often revealed through future generations. Jesus said he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 10:39. Who wants to be in bondage eternally? It is your responsibility to awaken the soul. The mortality of the body renewing out of incarceration wants to be used to good health and environmental changes, and either helps in rejuvenating the mind. This is the rational result of a soul awakening out of sleep, and after damages are repaired logically the body revives out of eternal incarceration. Ultimately future generations bodies and souls won't be hindered with fears when they're in a habit of accepting the reality of knowing negative results. Awakening, logical, rational, rejuvenating, renewing, and reviving results can apply to anyone wanting to face fears. Thereafter you don't accept or let chips fall how they may, you control boundaries and acknowledge failures as obstacles that need overcome rather than, hindered success. Short-term memory and potential. Short-term memory occurs in the prefrontal cortex of the brain, it is a process of the brain. And it is a very common problem in our society. Short-term memory works by continually storing small amounts of information for 30 seconds or less. If you can't remember, you won't want to reach full potential after using up your primitive energy. Practice and rehearsal can play a key role when determining your full potential and for remembering short-term. Religion itself is a recommended comfort zone for those suffering from short-term memory. Because it is common for people of religion to rely solely on practice and rehearsal of which are basic routines. There are more elderly and youth individuals for memory and potential reasons, and either relies heavily upon traditions. This is so one doesn't get out of touch with reality completely, after the primitive energy is used up. Having familiar faces around can help you remember things to seek which were lost. Essentially destiny, dreams, eternal comforts, eternal mate, and goals all of which can help determine full potential and break negative habits. Why aren't most people reaching their full potential? 
many people resist their highest potential avoiding extremities of future hardship or random notions, which come with the responsibility of future life. You rather stay busy fulfilling desires which are addictions, that you are incapable of being pleased or satisfied with. All this is to avoid righteous engagement for fear of being overtaken, by unconscious and uncommon notions that may become irresistible impulses. The fear is being oneself without fear of criticism, judgment, or rejection. You don't always feel you handle these emotions in circumstances properly, or may not be capable of doing so. It can be difficult when uncertain individuals spend an entire day criticizing, judging, or rejecting things other uncertain individuals do or say. And sure, they probably think they are a genius at doing so with much effort going into it. But it is a waste of time to listen to another uncertain individual. Once you have used the primitive energy up, you then need to be re-energized. You need more energy to think quickly about the extremities of future hardship and random notions, to not be caught up persistently denying there is full potential to live out. Living life's full potential. Sympathetically first accept the person God has given you to be, to get what is possible of potential. Consider yourself a worthwhile human being through the grace of God. You can't want to live someone else's life, God needs your full focus to guide and make you complete. But this can only be fully done from a righteous perspective. It is a step-by-step -step process and it won't happen overnight. Once you obtain the amount of education and knowledge needed to reach the full capacity of life expectations, then you can reach the full potential God has in store for you. Desires and Fulfillments To desire is too long for a wish that possibly can be fulfilled by self or others. To fulfill is to carry out a promise or wish, and either usually brings possibilities and satisfaction. If you don't have the same desires the person you may be comparing your success with, you won't feel a need to carry out the fulfillment that they have to get to their accomplishments. And if you haven't had those desires others won't help fulfill those needs either. Fulfillment brings their desires into reality. To reach full potential you must desire doing so, otherwise, you won't carry out the fulfillment needed to reach full potential. If you need guidance reaching your full potential, surround yourself with people that have the same goals. This is to find out things that need to be carried out and to be held accountable for achieving the accomplishments. And actually, these are the reasons you cannot base your success on what others have, it will only have you feeling delusional about your destiny and direction in life. 12 Ways to Reach Full Potential 01. Envision bigger accomplishments, plan strategic goals, and use available time wisely. 02. Stay in touch with spiritual guidance, utilize righteous determination and imagination regularly. 03. Live outside your comfort zone, but spend wisely. 04. Embody a positive attitude by exercising patience, and apologize when needed. 05. Stay focused on the current task. 06. Don't complicate things worse than they already are, speak truths, and don't blame others. 07. Re-energize continually. 08. Enjoy each moment of making wise choices and staying true to commitments, own your failures and successes. 09. Don't run from fear be accountable for your actions, this includes both future and past fears. 10. Observe people's intentions and notions, but don't be impulsed or overwhelmed by them. 11. Work with people of authority, don't work against them. 12. Acknowledge criticism, judgment, and rejection as a trial test, but not as setbacks can't be overcome. 13. Stop abandoning paths in your life, work through obstacles and overcome them consistently and diligently. Emotional Intelligence Long-term emotional intelligence enables control over delegations, empathy, motivation, self-awareness, regulations, and social skills. People with high emotional intelligence process information wisely in mental, job, and leadership areas. The goal is to use your ability, to process emotional information accurately to navigate through social environments responsibly. Improving emotional intelligence also means showing empathy and motivation towards others' needs, taking responsibility for your actions, listening to all details before delegating regulations, and not judging or stereotyping before getting all facts, to form self-awareness. Also, acknowledging when you were not perfect, after hurting someone's feelings and apologizing helps gain respect. People who are emotionally intelligent, acquire education and further knowledge to navigate, and this does enable doing it appropriately. What are angelic and godly characters? Angels and godly people are pure at heart, full of nature, and they conform to the laws and wishes of the Bible, to receive the divine promise. Either is spiritual beings who zealously messengers, serves, and worships God. Jesus and David embodied these characters, angelic, beautiful, faithful, forgiving, generous, graceful, godly, honorable, and loving. Also, both were humble, patient, overly submissive, and spiritless tamed. All of those characters bring out the sweeter side in a person rather than the salty side. Back in the day, when people saw a person exhibiting those characters, they already knew the person was set aside for God's ministry. Those are characters that most individuals lack today, due to processed foods being more available, 
and with cancer and diseases on the rise. The result is more cowardice and vainness, something prior generations weren't fond of. A person who zealously serves and worships God doesn't have to embrace lust or sexual desires without a forgiving nature. If you feel in your heart that something is dishonorable, then surely God does too. Once God acknowledges that you have done something dishonorable towards Him, He will want you to ask His forgiveness. And actually, you should ask God's forgiveness of anything dishonorable. Why respect angelic and godly characters? Characters help build dignity especially if they are honorable. The children of this world ought to see either angelic or godly character in their parents. They ought to know the difference between endurance, eternal, and things not lasting to transform into an adult. And they ought to be able to take a stand for something greater than themselves to overcome trial tests. This is an honorable way to show kids and teens that adults fail, and life isn't always going to be perfect. When a woman becomes a widow. How can you convince her of overcoming the tragedy, if you don't acknowledge there is something greater to live for yourself? When a person hits rock bottom, they want to hear there is hope to overcome. Also, the powers of a resurrection with the elderly has proven to have huge effects, when angelic and godly people visit them daily, and tell them their life will get better. People need hope in their lives, and sometimes they need to see hope in others to prove that it is possible. These are people living through adverse hardships and tragedies. And according to Jesus breaking the seal of the scroll, you are worthy of bearing dignity about yourself to endure forever. All this to say, we need more honorable characters in the world today. You must find it in your heart to become light for the world. Faith struggles shows determination. People you knew before will continually bring up your past, and some fellow congregates may do the same. But struggling with people for unforgiving reasons can make your life complicated, and so it is wise to spend time fighting the struggle of faith. You can't control others, speaking false statements without being true to self first. And if you want faith from others, you must build faith in them. Therefore, surround yourself with people that you can build faith. The people you surround yourself with will value faith in knowing that you can achieve what you set out to do. Show them you can stay consistent and committed to challenges you face daily, both negative and positive. Embody the righteous mentality, put the full suit of armor on for God. Strengthen over weakening yourself don't abandon paths, find joy in doing things accurately and throughout the rough times. And continually stay thirsty for being a witness for God. 2 Corinthians 4 7 says the earth is God's vessel, so the treasures of his excellent power will not leave you in despair with faith in him. Stand with determination against sin continually to fight for faith, this is how to deal with trial tests. Otherwise, you won't be equipped for the fight of faith for God, others, nor self. Struggles help build structure, and you show faith when standing with dignity and grace for the truth. All to utilize self-control while transforming with determination. And always remember non-believers and believers will want to see you transform. How to know a person has your purest intent at heart. There are three actions that everyday people perform on the people they meet, actions such as hinderer, saver, or ruiner. A hinderer will create difficulties for someone or something, resulting to delay or obstruction. A saver will prevent someone or something from being used up or in a scheme. And a ruiner will destroy, lay waste or ruin someone or something but these actions vary. A saver will always be a saver of lives no matter the cost. A hinderer or ruiner will always pretend to have no intent with current, future, or past events. Typically, deceivers will always perform whatever action they have planned. And deceivers are well aware of their actions, so much so they perform one or more of these actions on just about anyone. When working God's ministry, you can overcome, but you got to know when to stay in your lane when things are out of your control. What you have learned thus far is when friends, parents, or partners say they have your best intentions at heart. It doesn't mean they had your purest intent. What often holds you back from receiving your inheritance? Blaspheming, the enemy, hidden knowledge, living sacrifices, spiritual warfare, temptation, transforming, and untrustworthiness. Blaspheming holds you back when you swear by earth or heaven because the sin is unforgivable. The enemy holds you back when you pretend to be loyal to them, instead of letting them know that you are transforming for God. Hidden knowledge, holds you back when you haven't been told that you need to apply effort to achieve the inheritance. Living sacrifices are held back when you deny or ignore having control over sinful sacrifices. Spiritual warfare holds you back, when your works are burnt up in the fire, which are trial tests. Also, lack of knowledge that greed, jealousy, and lustful tendencies can form spiritual warfare with God or oneself. Because your works have to be proven before God, so avoid building up anger, while the facts are being proven, just face fears. Temptation holds you back when you don't control the impulse tendencies. Untrustworthiness holds you back when you don't control your affair of matters with grace and truth. Showing pride for wrongful actions shows a lack of dignity, and it can make you feel unworthy. Transforming with dignity and grace can prevent the temptation of greed, jealousy, and lustful tendencies. The biblical matters are relevant to life itself, and so avoid giving up things that would help your testimony of faith. 
Blaspheming God's Word. Blasphemers of the world won't explore or research topics of interest. They reverse and pervert God's Word and use it as a coercion technique. They acknowledge it as an unconscious human action rather than dishonesty. This means they swear by God, earth, and heaven. They sweep those evil deeds under a rug, instead of asking God's forgiveness. Also, they tend to want to hear themselves talk, and don't listen much. Blasphemers are some of the most unforgiving people in the world. A blasphemer can be religious or non-religious and we are to forgive them. And even though you sweep evil deeds under a rug without asking forgiveness, it doesn't mean the sins are forgiven by God. You shouldn't expect him to overlook them to receive blessings, honors, and rewards. An unforgiving nature reveals evil and wickedness, and it shows through the actions, anger, fears, and character. Warfare for the Spirit of God. Generally, enemies fear the impact you will have on others to lead them out of darkness into light. The enemy will try to distort your thoughts of long-term family, finances, housing, marital status, leisure time, sleep, and work abilities with a rebellious nature. Also, they will try to distort your memory and vocabulary of ethical values with anger, fear, greed, jealous tendencies, the lust of the flesh, the rebellious nature, or sex. During the manipulation, they will use false vocabulary unless you otherwise prove the facts. However, the struggle isn't with an enemy, it is the victory you are to claim by overcoming the power of their influence. You see an enemy can control a physical body, but they cannot control a man's spirit once his faith is in God. The spirit is controlled by the heart, and you are to love God with your whole heart. God wants for you what you are smart enough to want yourself. When you put on the armor of God, you take a stand against evil and tell the enemy to stop standing in the way of progress with God. They know once a man becomes a believer in Jesus Christ, he is no longer a loyal mindless victim. You walk through your emotions and face fears, it will only strengthen the victories. And normally you must control the rebellious nature to not be pulled in by more wickedness. Impulsive tendencies are consistent with vainglory, and there is no denying it. Warfare duties for God require biblical knowledge, communication skills, compassion, courage, faith, forgiveness, fruitfulness, leadership, love, obedience, patience, politeness, respect, suffering, etc. And ultimately, you will overcome to take back your willpower. Temptation of the spirit of the mind. The spirit of a mind generally tells you how and when impulses can be made from a righteous standpoint. All it takes is not getting enough sleep, and once this happens the temptation becomes easier to form into impulsive tendencies. Actions of alluring, enticing, entrapment, seduction, or tempting all are forms of temptation. The enemy knows, and they use those various temptations to control the spirit of the mind's righteous thoughts. They won't expect you to make a fearless or unique conscious decision about anything that will get you ahead in life. They may vanish thereafter to avoid the guilt of leading you to failure. But basically, they are willing to see you fail to later say, I told you so. Just another reason to take a step back, to form better bonds of communication with people that don't mind seeing you moving forward. For every unfruitful friendship, there are tons of fruitful friendships out there just waiting to happen. If you don't become susceptible to temptation, it won't form into an unfruitful friendship. And normally there are red flags you are to avoid while forming friendships. Untrustworthy people. Untrustworthy people tend to plan a whole destiny with a vengeance. In which they create a refuge of lies under falsehood, that can lead to the spirit of death. Isaiah 28,1-23, untrustworthy people want to be right all the time, and they will lie to cover up the deceit. Often the untrustworthiness is revealed when the person cannot be honored nor trusted. Because the credibility of a person decreases with deceit, lies, and falsehood. In a relationship, you would want to be loved rather than being right, but it is hard to see an untrustworthy person's vulnerable side. And it is even harder to accomplish victories with them on your side because they will want to win by cheating. You create untrustworthy people when you don't allow them space and time to control their affairs. In which they go way out the way recklessly destroying more lives. The helper tends to overlook the need to feel responsible. When a person excessively uses you, to keep from expressing the wrong emotions, just tell them their credibility with you has diminished. Then take a step back to allow them to be responsible for their actions. God's plan for you doesn't require a cheater character, it requires honorable and obedient characters. Most importantly he wouldn't want your destiny to include evil or wickedness. Just another reason to envision through the heavenly spirit of God. God will deal with the enemy. The technologies of today are often used in a ministry, those technologies can help empower to impact. Back in the day technology wasn't included, but now it is at the top of the chain of higher education and brilliant business ideas. However, the enemy battlegrounds are often social outlets such as businesses, cell phones, the internet, highways, malls, parks, pictures, video, theaters, etc., and those social outlets are becoming unbearable to live by. Too many people are becoming victims of an enemy's battlegrounds, because generally, 
they involve destruction, fear, threats, and violence. Jesus said, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with them. Matthew 5:25. simply put battleground isn't a term for empowerment when it involves destruction, fear, threats, and violence. God will put the enemy under your feet for a footstool, and all things were created for his glory. Tons of tactics can be administered, God will take action against them. And the battlegrounds of the enemy will become deliverance grounds for lost souls. You cannot serve two masters, you can only serve God. Everyone will die someday, prepare to serve on a higher level than hell on earth. You are oppressed and powerless without God's grace. Once you believe and obey the will of God, no enemy out of hell can hold you down. Prayer helps relinquish the power of an enemy's influence, so don't let them ruin your testimony. You will continually destroy others living the simple life. An aggressive nature. People attack first or intimidate create unfriendly concepts, it shows in their actions and attitude. There is a force that comes with aggressiveness such as arrogance and pushiness. Ordinarily, they come off sounding nervous and offensive, and they don't care whom they hurt. Aggressive people live a life of guilt because of the things they do that are wrong. Though nervous moods are commonly seen as tension thus a disorder, to claim a righteous victory you must separate the behavior. Aggressiveness can also be seen in people with bravery, confidence, courage, or even willpower. To avoid being stereotyped into categories, it is best to acknowledge having a righteous significant approach in your actions and attitudes while speaking at all times. Repent and reprove the sin. Reproving sin is to correct the expression of intent, explain the misunderstandings with true clear and concise communication. Repent is to show remorse for your evil and wicked actions. If you are the type to blame unrighteousness on the human unconscious state of mind, you need to reprove your sin. You can't sweep evil deeds under a rug, to turn around and lie covering up deceit. Repent and acknowledge the sin as wrong, show remorse and reprove the sin, and then ask God's forgiveness. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is light, and reproofs for discipline are the way of life. Proverbs 6:23. Jesus said he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. And when he come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not of me. Matthew 10 38, 16,8-9, get in the practice of repenting and reproving your sin. Things future generations need to avoid. Abuse, abandonment, acedia, adultery, anger, arrogance, bitterness, bullying, broken relationships, criminal warfare, confusion, covetousness, cowardice, cursing, doubt, depression, destruction, drunkenness, defilement, enemy warfare, failure, gluttony, greed, hostility, homelessness, irresponsible nature, ignorance, infidelity, jealousness, long suffering, lusting, manipulation, multiple relations, name-calling, negative use, naughty sex roles, oppression, quitting, rage, rebellion, rejection, robbery, selfless pride, spiritual warfare, stress, subrace racism, thievery, trial test, trespassing, unforgivable nature, vainness, violence, the wrath of judgment and worthlessness. These are just the basic things future generations will eventually have to overcome.